uh, really excited anytime you add your future pieces to, uh, to your family. Uh, great players, you can see that on tape, but I, I think uh, the thing that maybe I'm most excited about is uh, what they're going to bring and continue to add to, to our culture and the foundation of what we're doing as a football program. Smart, competitive, um, and um, you know, have great leadership skills too, and, and uh, ex excited about the 16 guys. I think uh, almost half the class comes from programs that won 10 games this past uh, past season. Uh, we got seven of them that will be mid-year enrollees as well, so uh, they'll be able to, to get uh, integrated right into our program right away in January, and obviously that's a, a huge benefit to those guys being able to, to go out and help us the following fall as well. So excited about the future and, and uh, really proud of the work that our coaches put in. Um, you know, this is a 365-day out-of-the-year process that, that ends uh, for these kids today. Uh, really proud of the work that uh, our players put into it, too. Um, we get them here on campus, um, but uh, ultimately the time that they get a chance to spend with our players is, is critical and those guys making the decision that they did. So uh, with that, I'll open it up to some questions. You looked ahead, saw a need for defensive backs. Talk yeah. about the haul you brought in. Yeah, today. I think you know when we first got here as, as a staff, uh, philosophically a little bit different in the way that we wanted to play on the defensive line and the number of bodies that we had. So uh, our first two classes were probably a little bit heavier there. That takes away some of the numbers. Uh, haven't signed big classes at the at the DB position. Um, it was a, a need uh, for us going into this recruiting cycle. We knew that um, uh, the players that we got are. are are big time players, man, and uh, come from really good programs. Uh, competitive, they're long, they got great speed. Um, I think these guys got a chance to come in here, push, and, and have an opportunity to play early, and, and we certainly need that from them. Coach, can you talk about just the evolution of, of the early signing period? This has become the biggest day, more than the February day. Yeah. And, 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 and also, uh, how much left recruiting left do you have to do for February? Right. Um, yeah. I, I mean, my first year here was the first year of the the you know the early signing period, and at that time, uh, there was still. Uh, Good amount that, that waited. Um, more and more kids are signing earlier in, in the uh, in the process. Um, I think it's good for them in the respect that they get a chance to to have the process over. Right, they get a chance to just go back and enjoy their senior year. Um, but uh, uh, we still have some work to do uh, here in January. We're never going to be able to sign a, a full class uh, this year just because of the numbers that uh, that we took a year ago and, and where we're at and inside of our program. Um, but we have a couple spots left that uh, that we have to go and uh, and fill here in January. Coach, you, you, you talk, talked about DBs a moment ago. You won a couple of battles, I guess, this morning with Justin Hodges and Devontae Brown. He's kind of talked about those two guys and what they bring. Yeah, uh, great speed, great length, uh, ability to play man press coverage, uh, can play multiple spots, could, could move inside and play nickel, can play out on the outside and, and cover outside wide receivers. Uh, a couple of guys that are from down south, um, you know, that, that had offers from another university down there too. Uh, Devontae being a, a legacy there. Um, just, you know, him wanting to come up or getting around our, our players and our staff during the recruiting process, trusting what this brand and this university is going to empower him to do the four years that he's playing here, um, you know, the opportunity to play after that, hopefully for him, but also just long term uh, living inside this state and, and uh, the power of the degree from this university, the network that's created and how that's going to empower him the rest of his life. Josh, you're able to kind of bolster your offensive line as well. You got a kid from Germany, six foot ten. But what, yeah, how fertile you, recruiting how ground you, for us over there. <laughs> I was gonna say, how do you how do you recruit a guy from Germany? What what kind of went down in that process with him? Uh, started a while back. Um, had an opportunity to watch just some movement skills of, of him. Uh, hadn't seen him in person. We're able to get him on, in on an official visit here late. Um, obviously, he I mean he's as big as he's listed, right? You never know that until you see him. Um, but uh, had great movement skills, right? And still raw in his understanding uh, of, of this game. Um, and, uh, you know, in some ways, the, the technique, I think he's got a really high ceiling. He's long, he's three, you know, six, six, nine and a half, six, ten. He's 300 pounds. Uh, he's going to be massive by the time he's done. Long reach, uh, can absolutely bend, you know what I mean? And, and uh, really an athletic kid for that size with great functional movement. And uh, uh, he'll be here in January. He's ready to get started. It was unique just in the recruiting process. He comes over with his mom. Um, we basically, one of our recruiting staff members, his wife, um, um, got uh, uh, took a German, uh, German in high school, right? And uh, so she became the translator over the course of the, of the weekend. She uh, uh, had put a lot of work in. But uh, it was a unique uh, recruitment.
I talk more about your tight end recruits and did Gabe help a little bit uh, in that recruiting process? That, that made uh, recruiting uh, Jordan a little bit easier, absolutely. He had great insight. He's been over here so much, just uh, coming over to practices and um, um, you know, being around our kids, uh, seeing them work out in the weight room. He knows them personally, right? Understands the culture and the expectations. He's got huge shoes coming in here. Everybody's talked about the work ethic that, that Gabe's had. Uh, he's got to come in here and, and have that same type of work ethic, but uh, excited to get him and, and uh, looking forward to having him ready to go compete in January. Josh, in the back here. How do you measure, it's difficult right now, but how do you measure whether or not this was a successful class for you right now? Uh, you, you measure it as they get on the field and go play and, and uh, the win total, right? Uh, at the end of the day, you're, you're recruiting. Um, uh, rankings should be dictated by, by how they finish and, and how they compete and the number of wins you have on the field. Uh, I think this is a, a tremendous group of, of, of kids. Um, they've won a bunch. They're accustomed to winning. Uh, they understand winning habits. Um, they're athletically gifted, um, but their, uh, their ability to come in and continue to add to the culture, uh, leadership, toughness, competitiveness, uh, being consistent day in and day out. Uh, we're looking for tough kids that want to compete and, and do it consistently, and, and uh, I'm really proud of the group that, uh, that we've put together here. Josh, you're able to get a big 6-4 wide out and just say it's a stretch cradle. What kind of upside do you think he has? Man, high, high ceiling, man. Uh, a kid that... Uh, you know, was a dominant basketball player. Uh, his basketball team wins a state championship uh, a year ago and, and has a chance to make a really deep run uh, this season. Got a chance to watch him a couple weeks ago, um, you know, go compete on the basketball floor, not, not a basketball game, but a uh, practice, and has the, the ability to play way above the rim and uh, is a really physical player out on, on the basketball court as well. And I think that speaks to his toughness, his competitiveness. Uh, he's going to come in and he'll have an opportunity to keep, compete early. Um, you know, I think he's a, a kid that's you know in a program that uh, had a great season and, and uh, uh, excited about what he brings. Josh in the back. What, what will we see kind of change on the field as you get more of the guys that you recruited and specifically picked for your football team? I think subtly you know everything that you do uh, defensively is always you know uh, predicated by your personnel offensively as well. I, I think the depth uh, inside of your program changes the way you're able to play on, on special teams and, and the number of guys that they're able to play. As we get more DBs in here, uh, you may see us in more dime packages, right? Um, so uh, it, it, it's all predicated off of that. You know, um, uh, two years ago uh, with Coobs here, Right, um, we played him in the box and, and spread out a bunch and, and had that flexibility. Um, you know, I think the guys that we recruited in this class uh, bring that type of flexibility as well. Coach, the running back you signed, Johnny Richardson. What do you like about him? True, man. Um, he, he's going to be uh, be a strong, you know, I'm going to use the word pit bull, man. Um, by the time he's done here, he, he's strong. He's going to blow up. Um, just when he gets in the weight room and, and trains consistently, he's got tremendous vision, great balance. He's physical at the end of his runs, got good long speed. Um, a kid that, uh, you know, at one time was leading the nation in rushing uh, during the course of uh, this season. Um, he's going to be a, a, a really special player. Josh, how much of this class is, is filling needs? For, your, for the next couple of years, and how much of it is just maybe trying to get some of the, the, the talented players here? Well, I, I think, you know, you look at the numbers. When, when the numbers are high at a position, right, it's because you you have a void and you're, you're trying to fill a need. Um, and, uh, and and then the rest of it, uh, if it's balanced, you're, you're probably just continue to add the right pieces to, to consistently improve and, and uh, build your roster uh, as you get deeper into your program. So uh, the DBs absolutely needed a big class. Really proud of, uh, of what we got. Coach, it's all right. Okay. When you're talking about depth and trying to build it, take UCF back up to that upper echelon of college football, how do you go about recruiting when you're going against the, the schools that aren't even in the AAC that you're, you're trying to take it up another notch? Say that, I'm sorry, say that one more time. How, how do you go about getting the kids on campus that you need to compete with guys I, I, outside of the ACC? At I, I think consistency in your program where you're winning every single year. Uh, we got an opportunity to go win 10, uh, go win the bowl game, win 10, right? Um, you know, I think that puts you in unique company. I think we're one of six teams in America that has a chance to win 35 games over the past three seasons. You know, you look at the brands of those other teams, uh, you are an elite company, right? And uh, uh, certainly we got elite talent here. feel like we're going to have a tremendous season next year if we continue to build on, on the blocks that uh, it takes to go win uh, consistent, consistently week in and week out. Um, as our facilities continue to improve, right? Um, 
that's a, a resource that, uh, that kids see and, and can feel it, right, uh, when they come on campus. As you put all those things together, that's how you go win uh, in-state battles and, and get players that, uh, that have those types of offers. Coach, two-part question. How, how, what would you say to those who judge recruiting classes on the rankings, first of all? That was the first part of the question. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, rankings are, are rankings, right? They're like preseason rankings to me, right? They, they don't mean a whole lot at the end of the day, right? Some of it's based on the number, the total number of guys that you have, right? And um, uh, I'll tell you this, like, um, our coaches put a ton of time into watching the tape. And the athletic talent is the first part that you see, right? At the end of the day, who you're bringing in is as important as the tape, right? The culture, the toughness, the competitiveness, those intrinsic traits that you have to have inside of your football team to go chase championships. Uh, our coaches did a tremendous job, in my opinion, of going out and making sure that we're getting the right fit, not just the talent, but the right fit that's going to allow us to go chase championships year in and year out. The other thing, do you agree with this sort of the narrative that signing day isn't as important with the proliferation of transfers in the transfer portal? Um, I, I, I think signing day um, is absolutely critical to the fundamental of, of who and what you are as a football program, absolutely. I think the transfer portal has changed it. Um, it's like free agency. You have the opportunity to add certain pieces uh, that uh, are probably need-based inside of your program as you go through the rest of the year before you kick off next fall. Josh, in the back here, um, was it easier for you this time around now that you're a little more established here at UCF and were, the, were kids more aware of you specifically? Absolutely. Uh, I think the, the further you're into to your tenure, uh, kids have more, um, they've been exposed to you more, more times that they've been on campus, right? They, there's more consistency and understanding of who and what you're going to be on the football field in all three phases of the game. And, and uh, that absolutely, uh, you know, played a pivotal part in, in getting some of these kids. Josh, were you able to, do you think you're able to save some scholarships maybe to use that transfer portal as you were talking about, if you have a need maybe to fill in the next couple months? Yeah, I, we, we were never going to get to a full 25 uh, signing class. Uh, just we couldn't because of, of what we've done and where our roster is at, which is not, that's a positive thing, right? Um, um, but uh, we do have a couple scholarships left uh, for January and potentially for transfers. Right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, guys.